Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. All 20 groups formed for the statute convention of CPN Maui Center done providing their comments. Premier Dahal Opain's central committee must be directly elected and office bearers appointed by the committee. The 16th conference of the World Social Forum kicks off in Kathmandu. Climate justice, economic inequality and health among many other themes for discussion. India Supreme Court scraps funding system called the electoral bonds that allowed individuals and companies to donate money to political parties anonymously and without limit. And Namibia defeats Nepal by four wickets under the ICC Cricket World Cup League to Triangular ODI series. Captain Gerald Erasmus claims five wickets in Namibia's win. Prime Minister and CPN Maui Centre Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal has said Central Committee members must be directly elected and office bearers appointed by the Central Committee at the statute convention of the party underway in the capital. Earlier, all 20 groups formed for making suggestions on the statute draft completed providing their comments and the Premier gave his opinions in response. Dahal has also proposed the numbers of Central Committee members to be maintained at 199. During the discussions, participating leaders and cadres had suggested for a direct election system for the Central Committee and also the office bearers. Unlike the proposal to reduce the Central Committee, the party is in a mindset of raising the number instead. Earlier in the draft of the statute, Central Committee was proposed to be of 151 members, which has been raised to 199. Likewise, the party has concluded that the number of office bearers should be maintained at 11. In response to the suggestions that the statute should determine the term for leaders in executive positions, the hollow point a separate regulation would be made for it. Majority of the participants opined that the party's leadership should be chosen based on competition. Preparations are now underway to give a final touch to the draft statute and endorse it from the convention that has been underway since three days. Thirteen groups had provided their comments on the draft yesterday and the remaining did so earlier today. Now, the 16th conference of the World Social Forum organized worldwide with the objective of applying pressure to maintain social and climate justice, human rights, equality, conservation of environment and sustainable peace has begun at Bhrikuti Mandap in Kathmandu, Nepal today. The participants at this conference, World Social Forum from different parts of the world, have their own specific issues of interest as well. Well, uh, the World Social Forum brings me here. I've uh, attended uh, many, many of them before, so I always want to go here. Well, it's to bring together the social movements around the world and, uh, and offer the alternative for a new world order, which is uh, people-centered and which is... Uh, providing justice for people on the grassroots level. Well, I, th I think uh, we need tremendously to have a social change and an economic change in our world. And if we don't do that anchored in the on the grassroots level with the social movements, we will fail because the, the big uh, capital interest will, will control it and govern it. We need to be people-centered and community-centered in, in the change which is needed all over the world. I see you're carrying a flag of Palestine yes, as well. So many wrong things happening around the world. How do you think can problems like these be resolved? Well, uh, let's hope first and foremost that uh, that there becomes an end of this uh, crazy bombing in uh, Gaza and the genocide which is going on there. And then people have to, the, the, the parties have to come together and speak about a solution which is based on international law. Unless it's based on international law, we are inviting nations for for anarchy, and Israel has to comply with international law, as all countries have to do. Uh, I think it's about all of us, everybody working together, building bridges and making connections so that we move forward, not just in the way that's like a greedy, capitalistic way, but a, a good, fair society. We work for women's rights, climate justice, land rights. So we are looking on to, you know, uh, just work towards uh, getting more uh, prosperity among our people and work for the unprivileged sections of society in our uh, country. So just like we are working in with pastoralist communities, we are working with women, we are working with children and most uh, of all we have our uh, focus on climate justice and resilience for which we are looking forward and we are trying to meet more and more people so that we can have some kind of innovative practices to be done in our country. Well, some of the participants 
shared their concerns about the lack of justice, the conditions of war and conflict happening around the world, while many others have been here for, to raise their voices regarding world peace, climate justice, and justice for children, and violation of animal rights as well. I think it's very important we keep uh, meeting each other. We have had a very hard time for the, with the pandemic, you know, the COVID-19, so we kind of stopped meeting together, so it's a very good thing we can... Uh, different delegation come together and you know try to build alternative so much of wrong is happening around the world so for peace what needs to be done from people like you and us well i think we have to fight to make our voices heard uh, much more and we keep we have to keep communicating the way you're doing and a lot of people are trying to do it it's key you know because there is a lot of uh, we can see human rights being very defeated recently and you know it's hard so we have to keep the motivation up yeah it's a, it's an important space because uh, bring the, a lot of uh, movement, uh, women movement, associations, and a different uh, alternative movements uh, beside each other to discuss about their experiences and their knowledge and to exchange their knowledge. Uh, and also really creating uh, alternative, uh, alternative uh, against racism, against nationalism, uh, against, against patriarchy, against fundamentalism. So uh, we actually, we all uh, people here searching for an alternative and we actually fighting and building in the same time the alternative. We are uh, talking about our experiences and learning from the other pe people from their experiences. These bad things, uh, all together we are here, we are not alone. We are a lot of people in the world. We know that we have to change the world. And we, we know that we have to manifest it, that uh, another world is possible. With Pasupati Burathoki and Murari Khimire in camera, Praram Dahal for Kantipur News. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. The question is, why are discussions underway to change the name of Mabu Center? Your options are A, ideological deviation, B, attempt to win public support, and C, paving way for unity. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The country, like rest of the world, celebrated Valentine's Day yesterday, commemorating the contributions of St. Valentine in helping Christian couples get married in secret. Unfortunately, a number of people in the country have lost their lives just for falling in love. The Constitution of Nepal envisions the end of caste-based discrimination. However, two youths have been killed for falling in love with girls from another ethnic community. Navraj Bika of Jajarkot and Ajit Mijar of Kavri were killed for falling in love with people from another caste. Bika was in love with a girl from Malla caste, a resident of Rukum West. He, along with his friends, on 23rd of May 2020, had reached Soti in Chorjhari Municipality 8 in Rukum West to meet his loved one. However, Bika and his six friends were murdered by the locals. Two and a half years later, on 5th December last year, Rukum District Court convicted 24 individuals for their involvement in the murder and sent them for life imprisonment, and two individuals were slapped two years in prison for caste-based discrimination. Although late, actions were taken against the perpetrators. In a similar story, Ajit Mijar of Pachkhal Kavri fell in love with a girl from Parajuli caste from a nearby village some nine years ago. They tied the knot two years later on 25th June 2016. However, two days later, their marriage ended due to pressure from the girl's family. Ajit went out of contact on 13th July the same year and was found dead in a forest in Thading. His body still remains at the TU teaching hospital in capital's Maharajganj. The indifference on part of the state has added more pain to his grief of losing 18-year-old son. There is a general call on the authorities to ensure that no more lives are lost just for falling in love. Time now for international update.
India's top court has struck down a scheme that allowed people to make anonymous donations to political parties, calling it unconstitutional. Electoral bonds were launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government in 2018 to make political funding more transparent. But critics say it's done the opposite and made the process more opaque. Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party has received most of the funds through the bonds. The scheme was challenged in the Supreme Court as a distortion of democracy. Today, a five-judge constitution bench ruled that electoral bonds violate citizens' right to access to information held by the government. The court directed the government-run State Bank of India, SBI, to not issue any more such bonds to provide identity, details of those who bought them, and to give information about bonds redeemed by each political party to election commission within a week. These interest-free, time-limited bonds are issued in fixed denominations, 1,000 to 10 million rupees, and can be purchased from a state-owned bank during specific periods of time through the year. Citizens and firms can donate them to political parties without revealing their identities. Only registered political parties who have also secured not less than 1% of the votes polled in the last election to the parliament or a state assembly can receive the bonds, which they have to cash them within 15 days. So far, electoral bonds worth 160 billion Indian rupees have been sold in 29 tranches. The BJP appears to be the main beneficiary, getting 57% of the bonds compared with 10% for the main opposition Congress party. The civilian death toll from two Israeli airstrikes in southern Lebanon has risen to 10 in the deadliest attack in more than four months of cross-border exchanges. The Lebanese armed group Hezbollah has promised to retaliate for yesterday's strikes, which hit the city of Nabetier and a village in southern Lebanon just hours after projectiles from Lebanon killed an Israeli soldier. In Nabatier, the attack knocked down part of a building, killing seven members of the same family, including a child, the state-run National News Agency said. A boy initially reported missing was found alive under the rubble. A woman and her two children are among those killed in an attack on the village of Asawana. A rocket barrage fired from Lebanon early on Wednesday struck the northern Israeli town of Safed, killing an Israeli soldier and wounding eight people. Government institutions, schools and the Lebanese University remain closed today in protest of the attacks. The 68th Munich Security Conference, MSC, is set to begin tomorrow, gathering global leaders, government officials, experts and private entities to engage in crucial discussions on pressing defence and security issues. An annual report published ahead of this year's Munich Security Conference expressed worries over the lose-lose dynamics amid growing geopolitical tensions and rising economic uncertainty. The growing threat of mass migration and radical Islamic terrorism have been ranked at the top of its security concerns. This shift in priorities is expected to influence the discussions at MSC 2024. The annual conference will bring together leaders in politics, defense and technology from over 100 countries this year. To foster inclusiveness, this year's conference will continue to place a special emphasis on countries from the Global South, including Latin America and Southeast Asia. Key attendees include U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and many others. This year, Wang Yi is expected to present China's position on international security issues, promoting the value of China's global security initiative as the fundamental solution to security challenges. The core mission of the MSC remains unchanged, to build peace through dialogue and strengthen the rules-based international order. The event is scheduled for February 16 to 18 in Munich, southern Germany. As fighting continues in Sudan, the country has suffered extensively from internet and communication breakdown. In many towns and cities, economic activities have been brought to stagnation, with many people unable to do any business or receive much-needed remittances from abroad. Authorities blame the Rapid Support Forces, the paramilitary group fighting the Sudanese army, for the blackout. The ongoing breakdown has had a profound impact on nearly every sector of society, affecting them in various ways. Worryingly for the army, which is fighting the paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces, its new wartime capital, Port Sudan, hasn't been spared from the blackouts. It's also to where many have fled to seek refuge. With most banks out of service, people have been unable to access financial services or banking applications. 
Amid the escalating conflict, worsening economic conditions have caused anxieties and concerns among many families who heavily depend on remittances from abroad to sustain their livelihoods. To the worst, the communication blackouts have caused disruptions to life and work as numerous individuals find themselves unable to establish or maintain contact with their family members residing in other parts of the country. Economic experts estimate that the interruption of internet and communications networks will cause millions of dollars in losses to the banking sector and businesses. Furthermore, these disruptions have significantly impacted the government's revenue collection, causing paralysis in income generation at key points such as ports, the passport authority, civil registry, traffic department and various other government departments. Satellite images showed an oil spill off the shore of the island Tobago just about a week after it was first spotted. First responders and volunteers have been trying to contain the 12-kilometer spill, which is emerging from a vessel that had capsized to avoid impacting a nearby cruise ship port, Trinidad and Tobago's government has said. But the leak has not been plugged. Satellite images and models suggest that waves might be taking some of the spill into the Caribbean Sea past northern Venezuela, increasing the risk that the oil impacts on the beaches in Trinidad and Tobago that have coral reefs and even other countries' coasts, the island's emergency management agency director said. One person has died and 21 people were wounded in a shooting in Missouri at the end of the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl victory parade. Officials said they treated eight victims who were an, in immediately life-threatening condition as well as seven others who had suffered injuries that could prove life-threatening. An area hospital confirmed that nine children were among the wounded. Police said they have arrested three suspects in connection to the shooting. The shots were fired west of Union Station, the train station in downtown Kansas City, which was close to thousands of fans who had gathered for the victory parade on Wednesday. The parade ended outside Union Station around 2 p.m. local time and local reports said Kansas City Chiefs players were still on a stage when shots were first fired. The gunfire caused the watching crowd, including the city's mayor and his family members, to run for cover. More than 800 police officers were already on the scene to monitor the parade, officials said, including on top of buildings to ensure the safety of those who had gathered to watch. The city's fire department was also present to provide medical attention if needed. Kansas City Police Chief Stacy Greaves said officers responded immediately after the gunshots broke out and detectives who were on the scene immediately opened an investigation. And that is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.